In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at envelopes. We're also going to look at how to generate events from envelopes and from basic clocks. But before we start, we better have a look at what an envelope is. The easiest way to think of a sound envelope might be in terms of an acoustic instrument like a keyboard. When you first strike the key, the volume is loud. This is called the attack. Shortly afterwards, it reduces from this loud volume to a slightly lower one. This is called the decay. This volume stays relatively constant, which is called the sustain. When the key is released, the sound is stopped. This is called the release. This basic envelope is called attack, decay, sustain, release, or ADSR envelope. Of course, all acoustic instruments are different in their sound envelopes. With computer generated music, we can use envelopes to modify whatever parameters we want. It does not just have to be the volume, it could be the frequency, the timbre, an addition of a particular sound, or really anything you want. You're not limited to the boundaries of an acoustic instrument. What is common with envelopes, however, is that they are made up from segments. You can see in this ADSR envelope, the A segment shows the volume going from zero to the maximum over the attack period. When the attack period is complete, the envelope moves into the decay segment, where the volume moves down to the sustained volume. The amount of time this takes is the decay period. When the decay period has elapsed, the envelope moves into the sustained segment, where the volume stays the same. When the release segment starts, the volume will go towards zero over the release duration. In a keyboard, the release segment starts when you release the key. With computer generated music, these segments can start or stop on any conditions that you want. So let's do it. First create a new composition by going to the source folder and making a new happy bracket sketch. Right click source, new Java class. In the kind, happy bracket sketch. And we'll name this my envelope generator. Click OK. Create our basic wave player by typing in basic wave player. Remember to use auto suggest to make it faster. Leave our frequency at 1000. However, make our initial volume zero because we want the start of our first segment to be zero. Press enter. Modify the waveform type in the wave player so we'll be playing a saw wave instead of a sine wave. Instead of buffer sine, change it to buffer saw. Add these constant values for our segments. You need to add an F after each value to define these values as floats. First to find our attack volume, we'll make that 0 0.2. Next, our decay volume. We'll make that 0 0.1. Now our sustain volume, make that 0 0.1. And our release volume will be back to 0. Now we want to define how long each segment is going to take. Each duration is in milliseconds. Let's just say it will take 400 milliseconds for the attack, 200 milliseconds for the decay, 800 milliseconds for our sustain, and 800 milliseconds for the release. This will give us a sound that goes for 2.2 seconds. So let's add our constants. First, our A duration. 400. Decay duration. 200. Sustain. 100. In the code where it says glide audio volume equals new glide, change the word glide to envelope. What we are saying is that the object we're going to use to control our gain amplifier is going to be an envelope.
Let's also change the name from audio volume to audio envelope, just to make it easy to see in the code that we're using an envelope. Rather than doing a search and replace, we can do this by what's called refactoring. Put your cursor inside audio volume and press Shift F6. Now type the word audio envelope and press enter. Everywhere inside the code where the name audio volume was used has been changed to audio envelope. Now let's make some segments for our envelope. In the line just above, type your HP action code above this line, we're going to add some segments. What we should also do is put some comments in our code. A comment is just a human readable explanation or an annotation in the code that makes it easier for us to understand what we were doing and why we were doing it. In Java, we can put a comment on a line by having two forward slashes. OK, let's play our example. Right click, recompile, right click, run. If we play that, it's pretty hard to catch what happened. What we need to do is to play it over and over again. What we can do is to create a clock with a duration of three seconds and play our sound once per clock beat. Below our last segment, type in clock timer. For the duration, type in 3000 and press enter. You can see IntelliJ has put the cursor right where we need to start typing K. However, what we need to do is to cut the segment code from our previous step and paste it in there. Now let's run it again. Now we can hear our sound repeating itself. Stop the program. Let us change some of the parameters of our envelope. Let's make our attack duration 40 milliseconds and our decay duration 80 milliseconds. Compile and run again. We hear the sound with a fast attack and decay repeating itself every 3 seconds. Let's increase the clock speed by reducing the interval to 1500. Stop the program. And change our clock duration to 1500. It sounds like it's going double the speed. But is it really? Let's double the speed again by reducing the duration to 750. The speed is not doubled at all. Why is it so? Let's look at what we've been doing. With every clock beat, we've been adding four new segments to the envelope an attack, a decay, a sustain, and a release. So the new segments do not start until the previous ones are completed. The sum of our segments is 20 plus 40 plus 800 plus 800, which is 
1660. So what we've been doing is adding an additional 1660 milliseconds worth of segments every 750 milliseconds. What we need to do is to create a new sound engine with each beat of the clock that creates and executes an envelope with these four segments. What we need to do is to cut the code for creating the sound engine and paste it inside the clock beat. Each time a clock beat occurs, we need to create a new wave player, envelope and gain object. Now let's compile and play. We can hear now that our speed has doubled. Press stop. Okay, we still have one problem. Each time a beat occurs, we create these three objects. However, the memory for these objects is never released. It's a bit like happy hour at the club and all the customers are buying drinks, but the glasses are never collected when the drink's finished. You end up with a load of empty glasses on the table. The club only has a certain number of glasses, so if they're not collected when they're empty, we'll run out of glasses and the club will be unable to service the patrons. So when the staff sees that the glass is empty on the table, he or she collects the glass, stacks it in the dishwasher tray to prepare them for the next customers who will require them. We need to do the same thing with the objects we have been creating. We need to notify Happy Brackets that we've finished with our object and that it can release those resources back to the system. We do this by generating what is called a kill trigger at the end of our last segment. We tell the kill trigger to release the resources for the gain object, which in turn will release all the resources for the object upstream from it. It's a bit like the table at a restaurant. When the table is marked for cleaning, all the cutlery, plates, glasses on the table are also taken back to the kitchen. So killing the gain object will kill the envelope and the wave player as well. But only the ones that were connected to its input. So let's add our kill trigger to the last segment. Now when the release segment is completed, the resources for the gain amplifier will be released. OK, now let's make this a little bit more interesting. How about we add a little bit of noise to our sound, just for the duration of the attack? However, we want our attack duration of the noise to be half that of our saw wave attack time, and we want no noise at the end of our original attack. This little envelope for the noise only has two segments. OK, let's do it. We're going to need another wave player to generate our noise, and another envelope controlled gain object to adjust the volume of our noise. Below our audio envelope, create another envelope called noise envelope. This means the happy brackets audio context, initial value zero. Below our first wave player, make another wave player called noise generator. Now create a gain object called Noise Amplifier and connect the noise envelope to it. Gain We're using the noise envelope to control this gain object. Now connect the noise generator to the noise amplifier. Now connect the noise amplifier to the audio output. Now that we've created the new audio engine for our noise, what we want to do is to make our noise envelope go from zero to maximum and back to zero again in that attack duration. We can do this with two segments, each half the duration of the attack. Remember to add a kill trigger to the last segment. Although you can add them in any place, it might make it easier to understand what you're doing by placing these two new segments to the noise envelope just below the segment we created for our attack audio envelope.
Now let's have some fun. Let's make the pitch of our sound change with the x-axis of our accelerometer and the y-axis change the speed of our clock. Let's add our accelerometer code by typing accelerometer sensor. First let's change the frequency. We'll use the same formula as we did previously. Now let's modify the speed of our clock so it will go from 200 milliseconds when it's level to 2000 when it's on maximum tilt. First we need to make an object so we can modify the clock speed and we'll do that just after we define our clock. Now we'll tell the clock to follow the interval based on the clock interval object. Now inside the accelerometer code, we're going to go float new speed equals math absolute yval times 1800 plus 200. Then we go clock interval, set value, new speed. Now download it to your device. I'm not really happy about the maximum and minimum speed, so let's add some constants so it'll be easy to change them. Although it's perfectly valid to define these two constant values here, we normally put constants towards the top of the file so it's easier to find and change them. So we'll just cut them and paste them just below the segment constants. Now I wasn't particularly happy with those durations in an artistic sense so I'm going to change my minimum duration to 100 and my maximum to 1000. Now you can see how easy it is using constants and having them all together at the top of your file. So that's it. We've seen how to modify our sounds using an envelope. We also saw how we can use a clock to generate events at specific intervals. We created multiple sound engines, layering one sound upon another with different envelopes, and then released the resources back to the system using a kill trigger when we were finished with them. Finally, we controlled our clock speed using the y-axis of an accelerometer, while we controlled the frequency with the x-axis.